Economic Growth and the Environment, Lecture Number Six. So there's an old debate uh, that continues to this day concerning whether economic growth is a friend or foe of the environment. I'm going to focus on just one specific case in this quick video, urban lead. Urban lead emissions are nasty. There's an epidemiology literature documenting that exposure to urban lead lowers children's IQ and increases their risk of attention deficit disorder. Jessica Reyes of Amherst College has written a fascinating paper using state year level data in the United States uh, roughly from 1950 to the present where she documents that lead exposure created by growing uh, car use in the 1950s is correlated with high crime in those cities in states 18 years later. So the story is children are exposed to high crime high crime, I blew it. Children are exposed to high urban lead emissions and then 18 years later when they're young adults they're more likely to be criminals. And But the good news is is the reverse plays out as the U.S. phases out lead emission, lead in gasoline in the early 1970s. Uh, because catalytic converters can't run on leaded gasoline, as the U.S. passes a uh, enforces unleaded gasoline in the early 1970s, we see in those states where lead emissions decline the most, we see crime start to fall in the early 1990s. So she argues that the phase, the, the phase in of leaded gasoline and the phase out of leaded gasoline in the 1970s can explain the rise and decline in crime 18 years later. Here's the real focus of what I want to talk about for our remaining time today. Uh, Frank Hilton and Arik Levinson in a 1998 Journal of Environmental Economics and Management paper capture this both the foe and friend notion of how economic growth affects the environment. Let's focus on the lower panel for a moment and take a look at this graph. I believe there's 48 nations here and these are data from the year 1992. On the horizontal axis, real gross domestic product per capita is graphed. So really poor nations are close to zero, and really rich nations are to the right. On the vertical axis, we see gasoline per capita measured in thousands of U.S. gallons. Notice the positive correlation across the 48 nations. So each nation is one of these black blob data points. So this is quite intuitive. Richer nations consume more gasoline per capita. So what's going on is you're more when the average person in a nation is richer, there in that nation there's more vehicles and each of them is being driven more so there's a higher gasoline per capita. So if you solely stared at this picture you would see that economic growth, if you only looked at the lower panel you would conclude that economic growth is bad for the environment because richer people are more likely to have a car and drive more and driving a, a, is, damages the environment. But now look at the upper panel. In the upper graph, you see the same x-axis again, real GDP per capita, but there's a different variable on the vertical axis. We're now graphing lead per gallon measured in grams. And notice you see a negative correlation. So let me explain what's going on. What I see in the upper panel is the quality of capitalism. As nations get richer, they get the lead out of gasoline, perhaps because they anticipate the effects that Reyes has documented. So all over the world, we see this sharp negative correlation. Richer nations have lower lead per gallon in their gasoline. So these two pictures, and their paper is called Factoring the Environmental Kuznets Curve, the lower panel documents the scale effect consumption of fossil fuels rises with per capita income and that's bad for the environment. But the upper panel captures the technique effect. Richer nations have greener techniques. There's a quality and quantity effect of capitalism. So again, the upper panel, because it, this is sometimes underemphasized, especially with young environmentalists. Richer nations consume higher quality goods and that's good news for the environment. In this case, the quality in the upper panel is measured as lead per gallon. We want that to be low. If we could get that down to zero, then there'd basically be no urban lead emissions, even if there was a lot of driving taking place. So a piece of algebra to wrap up this talk. Total lead emissions equals total gallons 
of gasoline consumed within a city or nation multiplied by lead per gallon. We can get the lead out of a city or nation either by not driving at all, setting gasoline consumption equal to zero, or by driving really clean vehicles if lead per gallon equaled zero. Think about it. We can solve environmental problems by shutting down our society or by figuring out greener, cleaner techniques to reduce emissions per unit of economic activity. I, for one, am a fan of the second approach.